Hello everyone on and off the Boonary, I'm Carrie Couture, and welcome back to my Creepy Catwalk Commentary, the show where I discuss each and every episode of the Boulay Brothers Dragula Season 5. So I'm back from my weekend in Chicago, it was very fun, very cute, I looked stunning, I performed at Fresh Faces, and also from Camp Wanakiki, we did Tarot's Reign Supreme. It was a lot of fun, I got a lot of really great feedback, it, it was a great time. I hung out with some really great friends, my drag sisters from my scene, celebrating one of their birthdays, such a such a good time, wouldn't have traded the time for anything in the world. But because I chose not to work outside of doing my gigs that weekend, I'm even further behind on artwork. I know I said this week would have art for episode 2 and 3, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be next week we'll have episodes 2 and 3. Or just episode 2, we'll see. I've got a very busy week this week again. So you'll just have to bear with me. I've done a lot of drag the last 4 or 5 days. I needed a little break from it, so this is what you get in terms of a look. We're serving, you know, cute little girl on vacation, maybe at the pool with her little beret, trying to get some sun because clearly I need it. But let's get into this episode. We start off with this cute little opening scene that is clearly inside of a hotel. I figured we were going to get a hotel themed challenge at some point this season, but I really wasn't sure what exactly that was going to entail. But the second I saw this opening scene, I knew that this was that episode, so I was off the bat very excited. So the remaining monsters are in the lab, just chit-chatting, jibber-jabbering, bantering, all the things. There's some budding little romance romance energies between Neo and Orgotic this week. And of course, the track that they use in the background while they're talking about all of that is the same one they use with Astrid and Hoso in season four during the reunion. But please, for the love of God, do not let this be a situation like Titans where this becomes the entire storyline of the season. I think if that ends up happening, I will lose my mind. They discuss what they think was going to be exterminated after this previous episode, and people make cases for both contestants, and eventually, in walks Cynthia, and she's all fired up, ready to go, reinvigorated into the competition, and Jay makes this comment in their talking head about how Cynthia has this monologue that she's clearly rehearsed, and it's annoying and ridiculous and you know, nobody wants to hear it. And I rolled my eyes so hard, they about flew out of my head. Pot, meat, kettle. Is that not what Jay has done? like the entirety of their time these last couple episodes. So the Boulets appear and inform the monsters that they will be doing a haunted hotel themed look for this next floor show, which I think is very, very fun. And there's a lot of things you could do with that. But at the same time, I feel like it's very easy to just excuse away your character not being fully immersed in the idea of a hotel because you could be like, well, they're just a guest. They're just traveling they, and they died there. The pendulum swings both ways on this one. They also will have to do a lip sync performance to a song from 1913. So already you have me intrigued. They also learned that their fright feet this week, they also learned that their fright feet this week is the key related one that they've had in a couple previous seasons. Whoever gets the lucky key has the power to save themselves from being put up for extermination or put someone else up for extermination. This season, however, also adds that they have the ability to save somebody else. And I don't think that that's a power that really most of these people would use unless they're hoping that, you know, the romance storyline comes in and someone who gets it will save the love of their life because Oh, the drama. I think Titans fucked up everyone in the head. Story producers, are you okay? And this segment is going to be hosted by the one and only Coco Kane, who looks incredible when she comes in, might I add. So unlike previous key challenges, this one is purely a game of chance where everyone gets a key and one of them is the lucky one that is their little room upgrade. Jarvis wins, gets this new power. I'm very excited that Jarvis is the one who gets it because the first couple episodes, Jarvis is sort of a background character. He's not really made any major waves or major moves in this competition. This gives him the opportunity to push himself a little more forward. There's the potential for a really big game move to be made, drama to spike, and tensions to really go off the rails. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. So as they're getting ready, Blackberry is, for the lack of a better word, brown nosing her way into Jarvis's good graces to make sure that Jarvis does not use this new power on her. As a viewer, I was very tickled by. If I was in the competition and people knew I had this ability and then they're like, hey bestie, do you need any help? Do you need anything from me? Because I'm more than happy. 
Hint, 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 tee hee hee, don't put me up. I would just use it for them being a kiss ass, honestly. Like, leave me alone and go back to your station and work on your stuff. And I know Jarvis had no intention of ever putting Blackberry in that position. It did tickle me though. And as they're getting ready, Throb walks over to Jay and pulls them aside. And my first initial reaction was, uh-oh. So, so the cauldron last episode, Throb telling Jay that maybe they should just be quiet right now was one of the most like egregious microaggressions against a person of color I think I've ever seen on this show. And it made me very uncomfortable. I don't know if Throb is maybe just oblivious to the fact that there are racial dynamics at play regardless of if they are intentional or not. And you have to be mindful of the words you use. And if you are talking to a person of color who's very upset and you just say, you need to just be quiet. It does not look at it at all. Like, even slightly. I want to say that this conversation seemed fairly productive, but going into it, I was very nervous. Jay's saying that they feel like they're going to be put through an after-school special with Rob in this conversation. To me, says a lot. Rob is talking at them and not talking to them. Jay's handling it really well, giving them major props for having to deal with all this bullshit <laughs> as much as they have. But I hope that conversation was productive and leads to like some growth for both of them. Jay is self-aware enough to know that they're very annoying, but also aware enough to know that they came into this competition real hot, real confident, real loud, and that maybe that didn't click with everybody. Just be more aware of what they're saying and how they're saying it in their delivery. That being said, I think Throb also needs to make that same analysis for some of his own things that he said, just putting that out there. We also see that Neo is really going through it, and it sort of summons this little meeting of the trans high council of Neo Satana and Fantasia, which I thought was a very important conversation regarding the safety of coming out, the difference in cultural backgrounds, and how it's not always a good thing to come out. Sometimes it's not safe. Sometimes you're putting yourself in more danger and more harm by coming out. And I think Neo brings that point up really well. She says that's something that she's regretful of. Regardless of my personal opinions on Neo, I think that's really heartbreaking to hear. And I hope that either things get better with the relationship with her family or that she takes Fantasia's advice and maybe separates herself from her family for a while, gets herself together, gets herself fully figured out, and then comes back to the family and sees what can be made of it from there. Alrighty, on to the floor show. All right, first up in terms of looks this week, we have the Boulets themselves. Very excited for these guest judges too, Tanana Reeve and Landon. Both look stunning as always. But let's talk about the Boulets and these very silly hats of theirs. I actually really like these looks a lot. I know Drac in particular hated the hat, thought it looked really silly. The fact that this look is UV reactive looked so cool in the presentation. It's giving like ectoplasm spa realness. And I personally really enjoyed their makeup. I thought the lips looked gorgeous. And I loved seeing them in something that was like a pastel instead of black all of the time. Arguably, these might be some of my favorite looks they've ever done. For the actual contestants, they start off all of the presentations with like elevator doors that open and in the editing, they put like a little ding, which I thought was so cute. I thought it really brought the whole idea together and the presentation of the doors opening to show all of their looks initially really hits that idea home in that presentation. I was hoping it was gonna be like an on location thing this season, but I'm very okay with them setting up the runway like this. All right, first up of the contestants, we have Throb Zombie. Loved this, loved everything about this. I do wish there was a little more like very clear readable hotel parts to this. The makeup's incredible as always. The details in everything, where the stones are placed, the color of the stones on the suit, the fit of the suit, the gloves having the red palms and having those be stoned too. Great attention to detail. My favorite part about this though is the cape. The texture is great. The color is great. Like it does not look like, like a cheap fun fur. It looks expensive and the color palette of it really helps sell that ghostly aspect with like the blues and the greens airbrushed into it and the upholstery fabric choice in comparison with every other fabric going on in this look no complaints no notes okay next up we have blackberry who is serving us a little cigarette girl look really great concept i thought this look was cute wasn't my favorite i didn't really understand the white in the makeup just like the general shapes of her her like facial elements her eye shape the lip shape, everything with that 
gorgeous as always. I loved the lettering on the cigarette box. I thought it was very cute, very funny, very camp. I thought the idea of having the cigarette burned and the ashes all over the look was also a nice touch. I thought the ash part that was like on the face wasn't as successful as some of the elements that were on the arms. But overall, I thought it was a cute look. Do I think it was the best this week? No, but it certainly was also not among the worst. Okay, Anaphylactic was up next. I loved this. I thought this was so pretty. This was so gorgeous, which I feel like is the biggest problem with this look is that it's too clean. To me, this look would fit a different TV show better than this one, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Had she stoned the red along the front of the dress, I think it would have added some heft and some weight to it and added that sense of sparkle. I love this makeup. This is definitely for me the best she has looked in this entire competition. I loved that in the performance when she like takes the little gun and shoots herself, she turns and the wig is styled and done in a way that it's like the blood, like the bullet has come out the back of her head and then it's run down the dress and that's like where all the stoning detail is. That idea is so good. I think her biggest hindrance this episode was not necessarily the look itself, but rather the performance and simply that she just took too long to reveal the drama of the gunshot details. But this is a week where I feel like everyone was really like firing off on all cylinders and she just happened to not fire off as much. Alrighty, next up we have JK. Can I just say this look and performance alone quite literally made me do a near 180 on Jay in this show, in this competition. I've been very vocal about how Jay has frustrated me, has annoyed me so far in certain aspects, but my God, this was fantastic. Like the structure of the jacket, the fact that he is both the service bell, the bellhop, and the mini bar, all simultaneously, so, so good. The makeup is incredible. It kind of gives me like Tim Burton energy, the way that the, the lines are, how like clean and, and thin and wispy and structured it is. This is easily the best look they've delivered in this competition. This performance to me was also the best in terms of, in terms of really capturing the energy and the vibe, the moves, the choreography. I think Jay is also one of the few that really truly utilized the stage to its fullest. This was really cute and I loved it. And to me, Jay is one of the only people who really hit the hotel theme right on the head. But to me, this is the best he's looked all season. This, And to me, this was also the best interpretation of the challenge. I would say it was the most literal of everybody this week, but literal works. And also, this was just silly and I loved it. Okay, next up we have Cynthia. I guess Cynthia is sort of a doorman, but also like a baggage person. So Cynthia's look from the waist up, well really from like here up, I liked. I liked the hat, I liked the jacket, I loved the cut and the cuff on the sleeve. The rest of it, I hated. I hate these pants so much. The shape of them when she's standing looks cool the really flared bell bottom part of it. But when she's walking, I don't know if it's the fabric choice or just the structure of the pant or what, but it looks like a completely separate look. And to me, if we're gonna go in on store-bought drag, this looks the most store-bought out of anything this episode. I just, I just did not really care for it that much. Next up we have Fantasia. And when I say the scream, I scrumped when I saw this face, this mug, this hair, the earrings, that first initial shot of her holding the microphone. Oh, I was so into it. Very, very excited to see her do this like Betty Boop lounge singer. But then I saw the dress. And to me, this does not fit a hotel challenge at all. If she would have taken the same concept of like a lounge singer, this would have been the opportunity for a gown. Like had she done like a distressed gown with this jewelry and this makeup and still carried out the theme of like being choked out by the microphone cord, that would have been so good. And I think she would have been a real contender to win this challenge had she done that. But this like Betty Boop idea is very cute and she performed it very well, but I just did not think that it carried over quite in the way that it needed to, to be anything other than safe. Next up we have Orgotic. And much like Fantasia, I did not understand how this made sense 
in a hotel. What is this character supposed to be? I was confused. And I think Jay brings up in the cauldron, not understanding the look. The little guy on his head, like controlling things, I thought was funny. But this is a look that you have to explain. And that's not gonna be beneficial to anybody as we saw with Onyx in the first episode. I just, I did not care for this. I think Orgotic is a very talented technical artist, again. I don't know what goes on in that little head of theirs, but this to me just did not bring it home. It did not deliver what it needed to deliver. Or to me, this was one of the worst looks this week. I just didn't understand how it fit into the theme of the episode. Next up, we have Satana. And I can honestly say, this look is my favorite thing she's done all season. This is the best she's looked. The makeup is gorgeous. The headpiece is perfect with the hair. My biggest issue is I don't like the dress. I love the idea of a goth showgirl like this, but if you're going to do this character who is a performer. I think the performance needs to be better. Sorry, girl. The Boulets mentioned on their podcast that when Satana walks out, she has this playbill that she like rips up immediately and you can't see what it says. You can't tell anything in the, in the show. She got the strangulation marks, which I thought was like a great way to show how her character died. But that reveal of like that setting the stage of her character being a visitor at this hotel to do a performance, she botched that. And it just went downhill from there, in my opinion. It was a clear clean look and a good performance, but she had a lot of details that she just messed up on with that performance, and ultimately I think that's why she ends up in the bottom. But she looks gorgeous, so I mean, that's always a good thing. Alrighty, next up we have Jarvis, and so this was very much Jarvis's challenge. I know Jarvis had a lot of technical problems in the performance, but I thought this look was really cool. I really enjoyed the wireframe hat. I thought that was a really interesting idea. I've never seen anything like that before. And it works really well with the rest of the look. I love the little stickers on the suitcase. This whole look is very on brand. It's very Jarvis's drag, which is what the judges want to see. However, I found this outfit, like base costume wise, to be very similar to his entrance look, just in terms of fabric choices and color palettes. So it just felt a little samey, just, just a little bit. So, I thought it was a great look, regardless. I enjoyed it, but I hope that Jarvis can do something that is still within his universe of a ghost character, but maybe he can step out of the color palette he's been using for most of the competition of all these grays and teals and, and neutrals like that. And last up, we have Neo. This look is gorgeous, what can I say? The technical skills that this woman has are off the charts incredible. The fact that the side of the face that was burned, she had little rhinestones to be the teeth. Genius idea there. This bride coming through the picture frame, gorgeous. I loved it. It, it just looked really great on stage. And once again, to me, this is one of the strongest looks in terms of visuals alone. But I don't understand how it fits into a hotel. So I wish there had been one or two elements more that would have brought that back in. So before the critiques really get going, Jarvis is asked to use his newfound power, which he does, to put Orgotic up for extermination. Genius. Genius move on his part. Such a good choice to go for. Neo, Throb, and Jay are called forward as the top three for this episode. I agree Throb should have been there because that look was arguably the best in terms of like well put together presentations. The performance was really good. And I think Jay definitely deserved to be up there because Jay's performance and look was the most immediately readable as a hotel character. But I think in terms of the lip sync, Jay also performed better than everybody else. So I'm very okay with him being up there. Love to see the glow up. But Neo, on the other hand, I feel like she's kind of getting some favoritism. Just a little bit. This is now the second week in a row she's told that your look is incredible. It's so well done visually, but it doesn't really fit the challenge. It doesn't really have enough of the theme. Why is she in the top then? I was curious to see how they were gonna critique her performance and what they were gonna say about it. And they specifically say, for someone who's only performed a handful of times, you did really well. And it was great and incredible, blah, 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 blah. Did she do a good job? I think she did, personally in the performance aspect of the challenge. I don't know. Something fell off about it. And I can't quite put my finger on what it was with like their critique of her performance, but it did feel like they're throwing her a bit of a bone because she's inexperienced as a performer, just because her looks are so clean and so good that she gets a pass. I feel like she's the opposite side of the coin of Alyssa Edwards, where Alyssa gets a pass for not necessarily having the best look or like great taste because she's Alyssa, but Neo 
gets a pass because she has great looks and great taste, just doesn't follow the fucking theme. But ultimately, it is JK who takes the win for this episode. Very well deserved. And for the third week in a row, I agree with the winner. Blackberry and Cynthia are then called safe, followed by Jarvis and Fantasia. While they're also called as safe this week, they get feedback because they've been safe every challenge so far. I think if Jarvis had not put Orcotic in the bottom, Jarvis probably would have found themselves in the bottom three position, but would have been safe just because their performance had some technical problems with things falling off and being a little clunky. Fantasia's critiques were the ones I probably had the most of an opinion on. For the first two episodes, they tell Onyx, we don't know who you are. We saw you as the sideshow showgirl. We want to see that. And she ultimately gets sent home because they're like, we don't really know who you are. You're doing with things that are way outside of what we thought you were going to do, so you're out. They basically told Onyx, we don't know you at all. But Fantasia, on the other hand, they know her too well and they want her to do something different and do something that like pushes herself outside of her little box of what she normally does. When they sent Onyx home for doing stuff outside of the box for what she normally does, pick a struggle. I don't think you can have it both ways, genuinely. To me, that just felt odd, felt a little weird. So that then leaves Satana and Anna up for extermination with Orgotic joining them. And they are told that their extermination for this week is they are going to be strapped to a mattress covered in cheese and then covered in rats who are gonna walk all over them and eat the food and maybe bite them and poop on them and just wriggle around and you can't move. So now going into the cauldron, Satana has already given up. She's made it very clear that she thinks they, they just don't like her. They don't like anything she's been doing and her time in the competition is coming to an end. So in my mind, she's made the decision for them. Even though she goes through with the extermination, Jay brings up my exact thoughts about Orgotic not fitting the challenge and not fitting within the hotel idea. While I get that this is, this is my character as a ghost for Orgotic, great. But how does it fit within a hotel context? After I finished watching the episode, I really sat back and thought, am, am I gonna be a JK stand now? I think I might be. Because honestly, they kind of spilled. And because Jay had the nerve to critique Orgotic's look during a little toast that they do, Orgotic pours their drink on Jay. And I saw this on Twitter, and I'm in agreement with it that if anybody were to do that to me, we would have a problem. So Jay is a much better person than I am, because like I said before, Jay's dealing with a lot of shit in this competition already, these first three episodes. I think that shows how big of a person they are. They're like, you know what, I'm not gonna do. I'm, I'm not gonna make a thing out of this. There's a scene in the trailer where Jay says, that's the last time you'll ever pour a drink on me. So I can't wait to see how this turns out. To me, Somebody saying, I don't like your look. I think you would have been in the bottom anyways if this person hadn't put you there because it doesn't make sense for the challenge. If your response to that is, you don't like what I did, I'm gonna pour my drink on you. That's such a bitch move. Things, I'm sure they're fine now and they're friends now, but like, that's just rude. Like that's rude and uncalled for. And I did not like it. So unfortunately, after getting covered in all of the rats, Satana's time in Dragula has come to a close. But can I just say, her coming up to the desk and ringing the bell is probably the single greatest shot of cinematography in the entire history of this show. Her look, in this context, in a hotel, with this stylized editing with the black and white visual, oh, it's immaculate! And the Shining reference, loved it. Here's my biggest, my biggest complaint. Actually, I have two big complaints with this extermination scene. One, the freeze frames. Why? Why did we need the freeze frame on Swan raising the axe and then Satana screaming before it fades out? Why did we do that? Boulez explain. The other thing, this is the big one that I'm, I have my gripe about with this. They had the perfect opportunity because they are like shot for shot recreating The Shining the fact that they did not take this as the opportunity for Swan, of all people, to go up to that little hole and look through and go, here's Swanee. That's just rude. Like you had the perfect setup for what could have been the joke of this season. And I'm mad about it. I don't know if the boule is like puns, but they had a pun right there. That would have been so good, so perfect so fitting for the theme and so like 
on the nose for what they're doing, and they just don't do anything with it. Like I said before, boulets, explain. And with that, we are now down to single digits for our monsters, and I cannot wait to see what they all have to go through next week. Once again, I think this was a really good episode. I think this is gonna be really where we start to see some some inclination of drama. Do I wish that it was really back to focusing on the art like they said it was going to be? Yes, but I'm hoping that as less people are there, we'll get more of that. As always, if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I genuinely cannot believe that these are doing the numbers they are, but I'm very grateful for it. Thank you again to all of the new folks who have jumped in after the last episode came out. I'm really excited to keep doing these. and. As much as I wanted to do art for everything, I, I realistically probably won't be able to. I really want to try to do all these looks, but I just don't know if it's going to feasibly play out. But again, just wanted to thank you all again for coming by, subscribing, commenting, watching. I appreciate it so much. And those of you who have decided to subscribe and stick around for, for the content, thank you. Welcome in. You've gotten in on the ground floor of what I hope to be something bigger with a better production value and better lighting and and more time to do things. I did make my behind the scenes TikTok of my episode one look, but I got muted immediately despite it using the exact same music that I used for the first one, so I have to re-edit that entire video. That will be up hopefully by the time this episode is up, so be sure to go follow me over on TikTok to see that, along with other behind the scenes looks at my play along illustrations for this season's floor show themes. At the same time, if you wanna see my floor show play alongs the second they're finished, be sure to go follow me over on Instagram too, it's the exact same handle to catch them the second they go live. Hopefully in the coming weeks things will slow down a bit more and I'll be able to really get back into doing the stuff I want to be doing with this series. Again, I apologize for not having art done on time. She's a busy girl. She's a booked girl. She's a sleepy eepy girl <laughs> who's very much in need of a nap and some rest. So I think I might go do that. I might go take a little nap. We'll see you whenever we see you. And as always, stay kind, stay queer, don't take life too seriously. And until next time, Toodle-boo!